and welcome to another Monday morning, Monday the 18th of January, and welcome to the writing lesson for today. Uh, today, every day this week, you will be given a different mission should you choose to accept it. You'll be given a different writing task every day. And the first task you need to complete today is to watch this video, Pigeon Impossible, and the link is on the website for you. Watch the video, Pigeon Impossible. You can see what they did there with a bit of play on words. Um, and you need to watch that before you do the nasty writing task today. So don't do the nasty writing first. Watch the video. The first time, just watch it, just enjoy it, because it's really uh, quite a good video. And then watch it again, maybe, and try to take in a bit more the second time what's actually happening in the video. Make a few notes, because it would help you with your writing tasks today. So the second time you watch, make a few notes in your home learning book or your notes book so that you can remember the sort of key events of, of the story of the video. Just bullet points, you don't have to write very much. Then have a go at the nasty writing task for today. So the video um, is all about a secret agent called Walter Beckett and this rather pesky pigeon who appears out of nowhere. If you haven't watched the video yet, I suggest you pause this video and go and watch it now, because otherwise this won't really make much sense to you. So do that now if you haven't watched it yet. Okay, hopefully now you've all watched the video. Um, we are having a quick recap today in Nasty Writing of the passive, which we have talked about a bit in class, in school, but it is quite a complex thing to get your head around the first time you learn about it. So I thought we would have a little bit of a recap today. So don't worry if you're thinking, oh, I can't remember anything about the passive at all. I know we did it. I can't really remember how to use it. Have a look at this first sentence in blue. I hope you can read it on your uh, screen. It says, out of the blue, a pigeon appeared and tried to grab his bagel. Then there's a sentence in red. All of a sudden, his delicious looking cinnamon bagel was snatched out of his hands. Which sentence do you think is passive and which sentence is written in the active voice? Have a little think. So if we look at the first sentence written in blue, the pigeon is at the beginning of the sentence. The pigeon is the focus of the sentence. The pigeon is the subject and it's doing the actions. The pigeon appeared and tried to grab his uh, bagel. So we are using the active voice. And that's what we use most of the time when we're talking or writing more informally. So it follows that this must be the passive. Let's have a look and see. This time, the bagel is at the start of the sentence. The bagel is the focus of the sentence, but the bagel isn't doing the action. The bagel's not snatching the pigeon. So we're using the passive voice. His delicious looking bagel was snatched out of his hands. And we also know it's passive because we've got two verbs, was, and then the verb in its past form, snatched. Don't forget, we talked about this in class. If you can insert by zombies at the end of the sentence, the sentence is in the passive voice. His delicious looking cinnamon bagel was snatched out of his hands by zombies, or in this case, a very hungry pigeon. So that's the passive form. So your task for nasty writing today is to write three to six sentences um, using the passive voice to finish the sentences about Pigeon Impossible. So I've given you sentence starters to, go, to um, get you going. And I've also put here that you need to use was plus a verb in its past form. So if I show you how I might do the first one, so I'm, you don't have to do them in order, you can choose whichever ones you want. You don't have to do all of them either. The nasty writing should be a quick sort of five, 10 minute task you do before the main writing task for the day. So it depends how fast you are at writing, depends how much you um, think you need to practice the passive voice. His briefcase, so I need to use was. If I just put his briefcase was grey, that's not using the passive voice, that's just describing the briefcase. So I need a verb now, a main verb in its past form. What happened to his briefcase? Well, the pigeon jumped inside it, didn't it? And sort of flew off with it. 
So I'm going to use the verb hijacked for my sentence. His briefcase was hijacked, not by zombies, but I know it's passive because I can put by at the end and it makes sense. His briefcase was hijacked by a hungry pigeon. Remember how to spell pigeon, it's quite a tricky spelling, isn't it? So you could always look up here to help you, P-O-N. So his briefcase, and there's my passive voice. Oops, sorry, I'll use a highlighter, a bit clearer then. His briefcase was hijacked by, so it must be passive, not by zombies, by a hungry pigeon. So that's the nasty writing for today. Have a go at that. And then your mission today, should you choose to accept it, is to write a factual account of what happened in the video clip for the police. Imagine you were there at the scene. Maybe you were in a cafe looking out the window. Maybe you were driving past. Maybe you were walking down the street. You are an important eyewitness today for the police and you need to write an account of what happened. So today we're really just um, making sure we've got all the events from the story clear in our heads. Remember to include the five W's in your writing. I've put them onto the learning grid for today as well to remind you what they are. Watch this video to help, which you are doing. And then use the checklist as always to help you. So I've put the checklist on the website. It's also got the five W's there for you, so you can see them. This week I've done the um, checklist slightly differently. So like we have in school very often, we've got one chilli, which is kind of what everybody should definitely be doing. Two chilies is really what you need to be doing if you, if you want to be a good year six writer. And three chilies are kind of something to challenge you if you feel that you're doing all these things and you want to try and uh, push your writing on that just that little bit more. So if you are looking at the purple uh, writing here, the, the one chilli, I thought that would help it stand out a bit better. We need to include the facts. We need to include our basic punctuation. And we need to be using the past tense because we're telling the police what happened. And then things we want to try and do to be year six writers, to try and use some of the passive, like we did in our nasty writing, some relative clauses, some subordinating conjunctions, and remembering our commas to separate those clauses. And then a real challenge, can you be using some of those semicolons to link clauses or even colons to introduce a linked clause like we did in nasty writing last week. So I'm going to have a go at this now just to show you how I would get started. So it's always good I think if you're going to uh, sort of retell um, what somebody, sorry, tell somebody what happened, retell events, that you start by saying when and where it happened. So I'm going to start like that with a fronted adverbial at the beginning. So I'm going to, and obviously we don't know when it happened so just make it up. I'm going to make it up. So on Tuesday, I'm going to pretend it looked quite sunny. I'm going to pretend it was the summer. So on Tuesday, the 19th of June, I'm going to pretend it was last year, 2020. In Now I think it looks like they're in America. So I'm going to just pretend they're in an American city. On Tuesday, 19th of June, 2020, in downtown... Um, I'm going to pretend it's Manhattan in New York. So you can make up your own date and place, or you can just magpie mine. It doesn't matter really. Um, you know, that's not important. Um, the main thing is that you're putting this information into your sentences so that it makes sense to the reader. On Tuesday, the 19th of June 2020, in downtown Manhattan, at approximately, I'm going to say, because that's a nice formal way of saying roughly, isn't it? At approximately, what time should we say? 10.20 a.m. So that's my fronted adverbial. And I'm going to use the first person because I'm almost making a statement. I noticed a man. This is Walter Beckett, the agent. You'll be getting to know him more as the week goes on. I noticed a man sitting quietly on a bench. Now why don't I tell the police what he was doing? Rather than starting a new sentence, I'm going to use a relative clause and remember my comma to separate that clause. I noticed a man sitting quietly on a bench 
who was, um, what was he doing? Can't read my book that, um, with the wrong glasses on. Who was eating a bagel and working with a briefcase, because that's the case that he's got, isn't it? It's not really a suitcase, is it? It's more of a, a briefcase. I think I need another comma there, don't I? Because that's the end of my relative clause. So actually, I put my relative clause into the middle of the sentence today. It's an embedded clause. On Tuesday, the 19th of June, 2020, in downtown Manhattan, at approximately 10.20 a.m., I noticed a man sitting quietly on a bench who was eating a bagel and working with a briefcase. Actually, no, I think I'm going to end the sentence there, sorry. Suddenly, a pigeon appeared. And I'm going to make it sound a bit more dramatic. Out of nowhere. So that's my um, adverbial in the middle of the sentence, giving extra information. It's a bit like parenthesis, isn't it? I've got my commas to separate it from the rest of the sentence. Um, and attacked him quite aggressively, I thought. The pigeon was quite aggressive, wasn't it, in the film? And attacked him quite aggressively while, oh, I've got one of my subordinate conjunctions there, while he was, what could I say? On Tuesday, I noticed a man sitting quietly on a bench who was eating a bagel and working with a briefcase. Suddenly, a pigeon appeared out of nowhere and attacked him quite aggressively while he was at work. The reason I read that back is because I wanted to say while he was working quietly, but then I thought, oh, I've written that already, so I need to not repeat myself. So that's good that I reread it and could think of something different to say. Um, and attacked him quite aggressively while he was at work. Now, what shall I say next? Um, unfortunately, now I need to try and use some passive, don't I? I haven't done that yet. Unfortunately, so rather than saying the pigeon flew off with his briefcase, for me, the briefcase is one of the most important things in this video because that's the thing that causes everything that happens afterwards. So I'm gonna put the briefcase first in this sentence. Unfortunately, the briefcase I could use my nasty writing sentence, was hijacked by a hungry pigeon. Great, now I've got my passive in. Um, who, and I'm gonna leave it there because I've noticed on the timer that I have gone for 13 minutes and 50 seconds, which is the longest video I think I've made since we've been in lockdown. So um, I think I should leave it there and let you now get on with writing your actual account of what happened in the video. Remember to do the nasty writing sentences first to give you a bit of practice with the passive. And then please send that in to your teachers today so they can have a look at your fantastic year six writing. Okay, have a lovely day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.